Let's take a look at different classifications of real numbers. Real numbers are most of the numbers that we ever think about or ever encounter. There is something actually called imaginary numbers, which are um, often negative square roots. Uh, those are imaginary numbers, but we're not going to get into that in this particular video. But real numbers can be broken down into a number of smaller groups, and they're represented, we can represent those groups using a Venn diagram. Um, here's a Venn diagram, which I'm going to fill in with the different groups of numbers. This innermost circle is our smallest group of numbers, and that's called the natural numbers. Natural numbers are basically the counting numbers, starting with 1 and going up from there. So natural numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Then, if we go out, the next group is called the whole numbers. Now, the whole numbers include all of the natural numbers, except we add in one more. To get from this group to this group, we add just one more, and that number is zero. Okay? So, whole numbers are all these numbers that I have listed here, and with the addition of zero. Next group, as we move our way out, are called the integers. Integers include all of the natural numbers, all of the whole numbers, and now we get into the negative numbers. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. That would be the integers. Going out from there, we then have what's called the rational numbers. Rational numbers are defined as numbers that can be written as a fraction or either, if they're decimals, they either repeat or they end. So, for example, um, a rational number would be like the fraction one third. That would be a rational number. Another rational number would be like the decimal 5.6. Okay? Uh, because it's a decimal and it ends. Now, we could also have 0 0.5 repeating. That would be a rational number because it repeats or ends, and in this case it repeats. On the other side of this line here, we have what are called irrational numbers. Irrational numbers, well, if we think about it, rational numbers are ones that either repeat or end. Irrational ones are ones that do not repeat and they do not end. The most well-known irrational number is pi. Pi is 3.1415 on and on and on and what we find is that it does not repeat and it also does not end so that would be an example of an irrational number other irrational numbers are often square roots ones that don't work out evenly so for example the square root of 3 if I grab my calculator here and take the square root of 3 I would find let me get to the right version of the calculator the square root of 3, we end up with that big ugly decimal. And it's all different stuff, and there's no sign of it ending or repeating. Remember that calculators will round off as many digits as they can give you, so this still goes on and on and on. Another one we could do, say, the square root of 5. See how it just continues on and on? If we had a bigger calculator or a smaller calculator, we would be given a different number of digits, but because of what we see here and how there's no real pattern and it doesn't show any signs of ending, um, it doesn't. So that's an irrational number. So we'll get rid of that. So um, remember, the groups that were within the larger groups also contain them. So for example, natural numbers, remember we said those are these here, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Natural numbers are also whole numbers. They're also integers. They're also rational. Okay? And then this big group 
is what are called real numbers. All rational and irrational numbers together make up the group real numbers. Remember I also said there are imaginary numbers, but we're not going to get into that right now. Okay, so let's classify these numbers that we've got sitting right over here. The number 5. Well, let's find the innermost group, and then we know it's contained in everything going out from there. So the number 5, well, we've got that down here, and I said that was a natural number. So number 5 would find us way inside here. And since it's a natural, that means it's also a whole number. That means it's also an integer. It's also a rational. It's also a real. Okay. The number negative 19. Well, it's not a natural because it's negative. It's not a whole number because it's negative. But it is an integer. Integers are where we get the negatives. So negative 19 would be sitting out here. So negative 19 would be contained in the group integers, rational numbers, and real numbers. The next one we've got negative one-third. Well, anytime we have a fraction or a decimal, that puts us all the way out to the rationals right away because we don't have any decimals or fractions within this group. Um, let me kind of highlight it for you here. The, um, the integers group. We don't have anything that is a fraction or a decimal within this group right here. Okay, so if we see a fraction or a decimal right away, we know, oop, that's going to be rational. Now, whether it's rational or irrational, it has to do with if it's a decimal, if it repeats or ends. Um, if it does not repeat or end, then it would be irrational. But if we can write it as a fraction, it's always going to be rational because that's a, a part of the rational definition. So we've got negative one third which is a rational number. Let me get rid of that uh, highlighting there. Okay, then the next one, the square root of 2. Well, let's figure out what the square root of 2 looks like. Square root of 2, if we pop it in our calculator here, is a big ugly number. And it turns out that that's never going to end. So that means it's going to be an irrational number. So square root of 2, oops, Square root of 2 goes over in the irrational side, right over here. Okay, and finally, pi, I've already mentioned, that's probably the most well known irrational number because never repeats and never ends. Okay, so classifying real numbers, the Venn diagram helps us a great deal. We see how the smaller groups are contained within the larger groups. And if a number, for example, is in this inside group, it's also in each of the groups outside of it. And all the numbers that we deal with generally are real numbers.